I'm uh, Evan. Uh, I'm from Agatema. And together with uh, Christopher Harlang, my old professor, we have made a visitor center at uh, Bornholm in Denmark, which I'm uh, very excited to get the chance to come back and uh, present for all of you. Um, and so to tell us about tell you about our project, uh, I have to tell you about the um, two premises of the project. And one of them is this. It's the landscape. It's uh, Bornholm. Um, and Bornholm is a part of Denmark. It's an island far to the east. But unlike the rest of Denmark, it actually has topography. Uh, the Danes call it the Rock Island, uh, which is partly true. It, it starts from the sunny beaches of the south and then it uh, climbs and climbs and climbs until it reaches a pinnacle where it sort of falls into the sea. And where it falls into the sea is this. Uh, that's our second premise. It's uh, Hamas Hus, uh, the old castle uh, planted by the medieval Danes. And over time, a lot of people uh, took this castle, um, they expanded it and expanded it, and then they just left it. So now it's the biggest castle ruin in Northern Europe, which is why half a million people visit each year. But up until now, when they got there, uh, there was poor infrastructure. It was difficult to get around the site. It was dangerous. Uh, and there was very little information about the historical significance of that place. So to remedy that, um, we got invited to a competition to do a visitor center and, uh, and sort of rethink the whole area. And for us, it became clear that there was three timelines that we had to solve at the same time. And one of them was the long, vast, expansive one, almost eternal one, of the landscape. And the second one started long before we got there, and it's going to be there long after we're gone, and that's, that's the castle. And then into these narratives, we were supposed to sort of like interject our own, one that starts now, you know, with us, with, with our project. And, uh, and how do you do that in a responsible way? So we proposed it could be done like this, and uh, I'll get back to the details later, but... For us, it was kind of funny. It was a weird point of pride when we had it in the competition to see that we had the lowest number of ideas of all the competitors. We had just one idea, and it was this. It's a uh, cut into the cliff, a cut in the rock, and a plateau above, and then views underneath, up into the ruin. And so why? This is why. So we could cut along the landscape uh, to sort of nestle our project into it. And when you look at the plan here, you see the old castle ruins to the left, you see our project to the right, you can see that the plans sort of talk to each other, only one of them is hewn out of the rock and the other one is carved and nestled into it. Um, and this cut had several positive effects on the final building, because the center could be sort of like dug down, it could sort of hide, um, and actually when you see from the castle, it's discreet. When you see towards the castle, you can't even see the building. So here's the final section. Looks like the sketch now. The uh, only thing that's added is a footbridge to get better connections across the entire area. And part of that was also moving the parking lots away from the ruin uh, and connect them to new paths, which take you here, which is the new, the plateau above our visitor center with views um, to the castle. And this is the first plan inside. And here you can see the cut actually makes it easier to make the plan because the back of it is the heavy part, the closed part, uh, where all the secondary functions is. And the front part is the open part, the glazed part, where all the public functions are. And then the back part can sort of flow in and out and define rooms for the open part. And so we enter from the middle and to the right is the exhibition, which is the north, to the left, is the cafe, the educational spaces, and the great views to the castle. And here you can see the new bridge that connects the two sides and makes the whole area more accessible. So let's take a look at it. So this is uh, from the cafe area. This is from the entrance area, looking back up. And this is a view from the bridge. And as you can see, the cut marked by the concrete and the plateau marked by the roof is present all the time. So the project presents as itself either way you look at it. And another thing to notice here is how the protruding, uh, protruding roof, the plateau, shields the glass. So it sort of makes the building non-reflective and hide uh, when you see it from the castle. And it also means 
the simpler detailing because you don't need shutters, you don't need solar, solar screens, etc. You can also see it here, which is our entrance inside. And uh, this is a view from the cafe area towards the entrance. This is a view from the entrance towards the cafe area. And this is a view from our exhibition space. Um, sorry. There. And as you can see, obviously the material pile is very, very limited. Where we cut the landscape, we put concrete. And then the plateau is always uh, wood and oak. Um, we have doors. Uh, we have do doors and steel frames and oak casings, doors and partitions in oak planks, and the footbridge and platforms are made of oak planks as well. And all this timber is locally sourced to keep uh, a local flair on the project. Uh, likewise, with the rock we blasted out of the uh, cliff, it's reused in the landscaping. And this is the material furnishings on the, the material pile on the furnishings, which is also from the local area. So this is wool from local sheep, for instance. Um, we also designed uh, furnishings, door handles, light fixtures. And all of these have been made specifically for the project. So it's kind of this more modern uh, Gesamtkunstwerk, which sounds very um, extravagant. But all of it is kind of to keep the project muted and downplayed uh, to focus on the real icon, which is the castle. So um, the other thing to notice here is our plateau. This is when you stand on top of it. And it's a new thing that we offer to the area. So this is a new space for, uh, for classes, for educators, for people on picnic. Uh, and it's a new way to experience history on the site. One thing is in the summer, but also in the winter when the center is closed. Um, so this is something new that we uh, and this project try to offer back. And you know, in the end, um, that is all this project offers. I mean, we took a plateau on a cliff and then a lot of talented, hardworking people spend a lot of money and time and effort to hand back a project that's a plateau on a cliff. Only now inside the cliff, there's shelter and there's exhibition and there's cafes and there's views and there's new ways to learn about uh, the immediate history of the site. So, um, you know, that's pretty much it. It's just a slit in the landscape. That's all there is. But uh, for me and for us who worked on it, on a place this special, um, we think it's just enough. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we have even more time left, I think. Um, who wants to start asking questions? Lee, please. I think it's a, a very modest intervention about the other side. Uh, but my question is, uh, I think uh, for a visitor center like this, uh, mm -hmm. an important approach is how to define the sequence, yeah. where you are first, and then yeah. how do you see the castle? Mm -hmm. Do you see the castle before you enter the, uh, the visitor center? It's, it's, it's a very good question. And I'm not just saying that as a political <laughs> answer. It's actually, um, uh, it has two parts. And one of them is for the general area, and one of them is for the center. Do you want me to answer, answer both of them? Yeah. Yeah. So for the general area, as I said, we moved the, um, we moved the parking spaces. There was existing uh, paths in the area already, and so we sort of s consolidated them. We, uh, we made new paths uh, starting from, so if you come with car, you have the view that I showed you. So you will be presented with the, the castle first. If you come by bus, which a lot of people do, especially the school, school buses uh, classes, uh, they will be dropped off at a place where, and this is where we get to the building part, uh, where they actually go down inside the building and from the entrance, that is when they're presented with the castle. And that's actually something that changed after the competition just to, to present the castle in a more dramatic uh, way. So now you actually walk along the cliff into the center and then the vista opens. Maybe it's good to show the site plan, if, if yes. possible. 
Uh, no, I, th I think the question is important because it's interesting to know whether you had any influence on the position or the ruling. And right. How far was landscaping mm -hmm. part of your design mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. this whole storyline of how to approach yeah. to build? Yeah, um, I'll try to answer. Um, so it's the, it's, uh, the site was defined. It was very sharply defined as uh, being position. on yes on like that part, and was actually the site was not very much bigger than the building itself. That doesn't mean that a lot of the other proposals were vastly different uh, and didn't really uh, take that into account. So uh, our approach was to look at one former uh, proposal for that site made by Jörn Utzon, which is a famed Danish architect in the late 60s, because he had placed the building on that site, but he had placed it on stilts to be more gentle to the landscape. And we, know we knew we couldn't do that, so we decided to dig it as far down and then try to build it in a way where, I don't know this sounds a little bit kooky, but maybe in a few hundred years it would be a beautiful ruin instead. Mm -hmm. I have a kind of question about the politeness of the approach. Mm -hmm. And on the one hand, it seems out of a, the decisions were taken out of a sense of respect for both the landscape and also the castle. But I wonder also how much this approach is typical. Right, for like a Danish context, yeah. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to say, and again referring to the competition because that's the best uh, referral point because we were all had we all got the same brief. Um, we we were scared to hand it in because we thought there would be five proposals looking like that, and it was one, mm -hmm. you know, because because I think a lot of the other uh, and you know super talented architects, but but they um, they can resist sort of like showing off a little bit. Uh, and for us, that was showing us was showing how well we could do. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you <clears throat> arrive here from wherever you come from? Yeah, I mean, do you come from by car, by bus? Do you have to? How yes, yes, how long yes. do you have to walk yeah. before you get to the bridge? Okay, let's see if I can't. Now I should have a side plan. Um, not far is the short answer, um, and. Since it's Denmark. So you arrive here, no? Yeah, so you arrive a little bit north of that ramp. Uh, let's see if I can't. Uh, since this is Denmark, even though it's on a very uh, rugged natural side, you can see the uh, parking space for the buses is to the north there, and for the cars is to uh, at the bottom right. I see. So it's not very far. And since it's Denmark, everything has to be to building code, so you have to be able to park wherever you want almost uh, and get there in a wheelchair. And so the problem comes when you want to go from there to the top of the ruin because that's obviously not wheelchair accessible. But the center itself is. And is the interior of the visitor center uh, heated? Yes. Have you tried to reduce the expense of, uh, of uh, the use of energy mm -hmm. on some form of sustainable? Yeah, I mean, if you're asking about sustainability in general, um, I would say yes. And again, the Danish building code is super strict. So already there, we had standards we had to apply that was very strict. One of the things we did uh, was already done in the concept by having the thermal mass because we sunk the, half the project into the earth, right? And so all the glazed parts are actually uh, almost not exposed because of our cantilevering roof. So in the high summer months sun, in the north, that's a big difference, um, the warmth from that is shielded. And in the winter, when the sun is low, it heats the building. Uh, so it's like small things like that, but actually our focus on the um, environmental, because the building code is so strict, we sort of felt like, okay, we had this figured, there's other things here that are more important, and that's maybe social, uh, uh, the social part of it, you know. So it's like lo local craftspeople, uh, local uh, wood, local stone, uh, and, and that's also a big part of why the initial massive skepsis for doing something on such a sort of holy site on that island has completely turned down because they were involved in the process in a very real way. Well, thank you very much. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, very clear thank you. presentation. Thank you thank very you. much. Beautiful project.